all these different uh, tyrannies are, in my opinion, and maybe I'm, this is a kind of novel theory. I don't talk about it a ton. So, uh, and I think about it when I have time. So I'm probably leaving details out. Let's mm-hmm. not call it a fully formed theory, mm-hmm. but just as a benchmark, let's put that there are two, there are basically two forms to the tyranny. And they're both based off of the same model, which is the model given in Plato's Republic, Mm. where you have the philosopher kings who Mm -hmm. are like the gods, and then they have a layer below them that are their Praetorian guard, and then you have a layer below them that do all the productive work. Then you have the uh, hoi polloi Mm -hmm. down at the bottom. So that creates a pyramid of society, right? Mm -hmm. And the model that that actually, the right name for that, given Plato's use of the term techne, is a technocracy. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's a rule by the people who have the enlightened understanding of techni. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a technocracy, the rule by experts. Mm-hmm. And my guess is that most of the people who fund Marxism are on the upright pyramid of Plato mm-hmm. model. What Marx actually does is he takes the Plato model and flips it upside down. Mm-hmm. And so then the Marxists put themselves there. You ever notice how they say center this, center that, decenter this, we're going to decenter whiteness, we're going to center, you know, alternative perspectives indigenous perspectives at center uh-huh. decenter they move themselves to the center of the bottom of society flip it over and then what's going to happen it's all going to fall make a new junky pyramid and they're on top and so they become the new enlightened philosopher kings that are going to rule over they install a stasi or a kgb or yeah. you know cheka or whatever to make sure that they have their layer of protection a people's liberation army in china then they have all of the party functionaries who basically do everything. And then you have the masses. And so it's just the same model, but it's wow. actual kind of, you know, n- natural law orientation is flipped over from wow. the platonic. And I think all the tyrannies are just these two triangles, these two pyramids mm. of society, either upright or upside down. Mm. And But it's the same model. It's the exact same concept, which, by the way, Plato also described in the term democracy. So mm-hmm. you always hear him say, our democracy depends on apparently destroying all freedom and Elon Musk, probably Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin bad for democracy? Do they say that? Uh, I, I, don't, I haven't heard I'm that. I'm sure they say it. Everything they uh, don't like is bad for democracy. Yeah, I'm so, not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't caught uh, that one. It's usually bad for the environment. That's the big one. Well, that, yeah, that's that part of the shaped. democracy. Yeah, okay. the metabolic rift, of course. Yes. yes. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. it's the same model, though. So what yeah. it is is, both of them are technocratic models. Yeah. That there's an enlightened technocratic class that gets to be in charge of everything. They're the stakeholders, right. so to speak. And they're going to speak for the masses and they have their whole structure of society that makes them invincible. And my suspicion is, is that there are people at already at kind of the top crust of our society. There's a weirdo group of people called evolutionary leaders out there that are affiliated vaguely with like kind of new agey stuff, but also the UN, Mm -hmm. they call them, and I quote, the hierarchy, Hmm. which I might think, I think that might even be a Masonic term as well. Mm. The hierarchy runs everything, right? And so there's likely to be cough, cough, royal family members and such that are Mm. extraordinarily high on, Mm -hmm. on the pile. And sometimes you need a little, you know, neoliberalism. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you need a little communism. Sometimes you need a little fascism to shake things up and get it where you need it to be. But they just use these tools to manipulate society. So basically if you want to go full conspiracy theory, so they can keep their global sex, sex trafficking and drug trade going. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 oh man, the, I've heard of this. I like how you shake things up because I'm, I'm thinking of the jar with the fire ants and the black ants. Oh yeah. And you put them in there and they're fine. Yeah. But if you shake the jar, they'll yeah. all basically murder each they'll other. They'll kill each other. So yeah. it's the, the ants obviously are mad at each other, but they should be mad at whoever's shaking yeah, that's the jar. Right. So I suspect yeah. that, that that's how this really works. I'm yeah. suspecting. I'm right. way out over my skis. Right. I'm more than happy if you have one to put a tinfoil hat on for, the, for this part of the interview. <laughs> I'm, I'm gotta, putting gotta... my cards on the table, basically, though, honestly, no, about that. No, that's, that's fantastic. Um, but I think Marxism is there for a tool. But yes, I think that the right. Marxists who are bought into it they buy it they believe it right because those are almost like the functionaries in that hierarchy that are doing the work so they need to believe yeah and they need to drink the kool-aid so to speak that's right yeah 
Yeah. Okay. So they're they're the ones that are going to be the party members that get everything done. Right. They're also going to be the most loyal and vicious of them will become yeah. the guard. Right. And then the elite can believe it or not believe it and putz around whoever they want as long as they say the right thing in public. So it sounds like we're describing ultimately that humans are hierarchical animals and only we're more sophisticated in how we structure our hierarchies and that we use mm -hmm. we play these language games with one another mm -hmm. and that this these are the iterations of the language game almost. Now let's get Jordan Peterson down here to tell us about lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's true because the language games get you to misunderstand right. the fundamental structure of a organic hierarchy. Yes. And Jordan Peterson, I didn't just bring him up to make the joke about lobsters. He mm -hmm. has an extraordinarily, it's one of the best points. I mean, he makes a lot of good points, mm -hmm. but it's one of his best points that he makes is he says that their hierarchy is universal. Of course. And so the question is, how much corruption is in the hierarchy? Yes. And the answer is never zero. It would be right. great. I guess that's heaven, right? Yeah. There's no corruption in the hierarchy. God's at the top. The angels worship him. Everybody else worships. You know, that's a, there's no such thing as a perfect How do we define here. corruption here? That's a good question. Um, corruption would be, for Jordan Peterson, what it boils down to is corruption is a system in which people are rewarded for that which they did not contribute got so like we were saying earlier right the, yeah yes so nepotism right. yeah. for example you yeah. know yeah. your kid blah 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 he didn't really contribute to the company but maybe he's gonna be the new ceo right and you know right. as they say sob sons of bosses yeah. yeah yeah um never getting rid of nepotism that's for sure there's gonna be these corruptions yeah. but he says that the more meritocra meritocratic yes a system is right. the lower its corruption yes and so meritocracy is a system that is designed to minimize basically handing favors out to people who don't deserve them. That's right. Like maybe they've shown loyalty. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have the same ideology or religion. Maybe it's whatever. It's great if people have the same religion. It's not a problem, mm -hmm. but it doesn't get anything done. Not right. by itself. Right. It's still what do you bring to the table? What can you do? Mm -hmm. That if you want a maximally successful, flourishing, prosperous society where well-being, standard of living, mm -hmm. more, most importantly, though, capacity to solve new problems. Yes. Where those things are maximized, you want the smallest amount of people basically getting paid for nothing or paid off or buddy system, right. old boys. You want the least of that possible. Right. And because you want problems solved and yeah. you want the capacity to solve problems. You want innovation to, to be at the front of what's mm -hmm. going on. And that requires a meritocratic system mm -hmm. and that requires individual individualism and the capacity to profit off of taking risks. And that requires strong private property. That That isn't possible without strong private property. Yeah. It doesn't even, it's not, it's a non-starter. Yeah. That's fantastic. Let me then. My whole thing actually, by the way, yeah. is that, you have two choices. You can build your, you know, in the yeah. Bible, it's you can build your your house on on rock or on sand. Yeah. You have two choices if you're going to build a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Either it's built on competence and merit, mm -hmm. or it's built on corruption. Mm. So a definition for corruption could be, and it's kind of what I gave, I guess, is every single aspect of how you build out a hierarchy that's not earned. Mm -hmm. So it'd be coercion. Right. coercion yeah. for sure right or it could be nepotism too I guess, yeah, you know, yeah yeah favor favoritism yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all kinds of corruption but when it's not but coercion's one for sure when it's not directly rewarding productive output mm -hmm. then it falls into that second category right. and yeah. productive by the way can be actually i define it fairly broadly yeah. my definition of progress is fairly broad too it's solving problems in the world mm -hmm. which could be kind of necessary things mm -hmm. like, you know, shelter, clean up after mm -hmm. disasters, protection, you know, food, basic energy, you know, stuff like that. But it could be something more abstract, like satisfying people's not just needs, but wants. Yes. Yeah. This is the market. That's exactly how Mises describes a market process. Yeah. It's satisfying consumer wants better, faster, cheaper, basically. Yeah. And that's the name of the game in capitalism, right? That's how you acquire wealth. That's the only way you acquire wealth because, well, in, I hate to say this, but like real capitalism, I don't want to say it's like, oh, we never had real socialism, like we never had real capitalism, but we've actually never had real capitalism because we've always had property getting violated. Yeah, right. But right. in real capitalism, 
He says you can't take people's stuff. The only thing you can do is satisfy their wants profitably. That's how you create wealth for yourself. Right. If you want somebody's stuff, like I want some of your stuff or mm-hmm. whatever, I have to demonstrate to you for some reason that you want to give me some of your stuff. Yes. And yeah. then you and I go into what's called a voluntary exchange. Exactly. I say, well, I have this stuff or this yes. idea or this capacity to help you out. And you're like, well, I have these, you know, wonderful Podcast. bananas I grow or That's whatever. I yeah. <laughs> and so here, yeah. let's have an exchange. And then we shake hands, yeah. which is the equivalent of a contract as far as when it gets more formal. Yeah. And we've entered into a contract to exchange goods and services because we think it's of mutual benefit exactly if we are right in that guess and every time we're right in that guess that it's of mutual benefit that means both of us came out better than we were before yeah which means ships rise right 